And our Bible study today will be taken from Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 5. Revelation chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 5. Let's have Revelation 2, 1 to 5. Revelation 2, 1 to 5. If you are there, we will stand up to read together from the screen. Let's be on our feet. Revelation 2. 1 to 5. I'll read verse 1, you read verse 2. I'll read verse 3, you read verse 4. Then we'll read verse 5 together. Now, this service today, we want to work on the re restoring the first love of the Christian. Now, that's what we want to look at. Because what I'll be talking about is the level of devotion of a lot of believers have dropped. You know, the level of devotion. And when your level of devotion drops, there are certain things you can't enjoy. Uh, spiritual things you can't enjoy. Let's read. Uh, I'll read verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his hands, in his hands, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. Let's look at verse 2. You read verse 2, 1, 2, 3. Let's go. I know your works, your labor, your patience and that you cannot bear those who are evil and you have tasted those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars very good church the efficient church very good church now look at this and have and you have sorry and you have persevered uh, sorry uh, uh, yeah persevered uh, and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Okay, you read verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Pay attention to that. We are going somewhere. Let's read verse 5 together. 1, 2, 3 and let's go. Remember therefore from where you are falling. Repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Father, we ask for deeper revelation, for uh, instruction in righteousness again today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. Let's take our seats in his presence. Now, the word we are going to study today, listen, I want your attention this morning and I want you to learn something in God's presence. Now, one of the reasons why uh, we noticed, listen, that miracles, if you look at the, when we read our Bibles and you look at the happenings today, some people will think that the God that worked miracles in the days of the apostles is no longer interested in working miracles today. It's not true. Now, I told you one of the reasons last week, and to now it, I'm, I'm showing you that a lot of Christians have dropped in their devotion to God. Now, just like the scripture we have read, a lot of Christians have dropped in their devotion. People are no longer as committed to God as they used to be. I always tell people that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is an encounter with, uh, with God, you know, born out of the truth of God's word you hear in Christ that now gives birth to a walk with God. You had an encounter and it gives birth to a walk. You had an encounter, a birth to a walk, and you decide to say, I'm going to walk with God. Now, and when you decide to walk with God, you know, there are so many decisions you will make at the point of your encounter, that I made this encounter with God, you know, I had this encounter with God, and I'm making this choice. I had this encounter with God, and I'm, I'm making this choice, you know. And uh, we start working like that. And some of us used to say, ah, Pastor, in fact, in the, the way I received Christ, if you look at the way I used to see the move of God in my life, what is happening now? A lot of you have dropped in your devotion. I wrote here, a lot of believers have dropped in their devotion to God, in their work of purity, in the place of prayer, in the place of study. Now, what does it mean to drop in your first love let's take the scriptures and let's look at it now when the word of god is saying you have dropped in your first love what does he actually mean 
Now, I study the same scripture, the same verse from the Good News Bible. Do we have the Good News on our on the on our, our platform here? If you have Good News Bible, please show me Revelation chapter two, from verse one. Let's read it from the Good News version. It simplifies it more so that you can easily understand it. That's GNT. Good news is GNT. So go to Good News Version, Revelation chapter 2 from verse 1. From verse 1. Thank you. It says, think how far. Now take it from verse 1. From verse 1. From verse 1. Sagada basken de lebo soto ye shataya skin de lebos. Regada base. We have to be patient with the machine. Now to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? This is the message from the one who holds the seven stands in his right hand and who walks among the seven gold lampstand. I walk among the seven gold lampstand. I know what you have done. I know how hard you have worked and how patient you have been. I know that you cannot tolerate evil people and that you have tested those who say they are apostles but are not and have found out that they are liars. Can you see that they had solid designing spirit? They couldn't discover, I mean, differentiate fake from truth. You are patient. You have suffered for my sake and you have not giving up now good qualities in that church next verse you've not given up next verse now he said but this is what i have against you you do not love me now can you see all these things that was being said at the earlier verse were the things they were doing before now god is now saying i mean jesus is now saying you do not love me now as you did at first now, which means there was a peculiar kind of love you used to have for me before that has dropped, that has changed. So when we say first love, now let's read verse 5, then I'll start to explain. Now think how far you are falling. Turn from your sins and do what you did at first. If you don't turn from your sins, I will come to you and take your lampstand from the place. So what does it mean to drop in your first love it means according to good news version for you for uh, sorry it means that where, where am i it means that uh the, the, it means that things you sacrificed before because of your love for him you now see as not necessary now what does he mean to fall from your first love you you once had is you know a, a, a sacrificial attitude that made you do certain things but now that sacrificial attitude is no longer there which means there are several things you were doing because you love god before but today you just suddenly begin to see that these things are no longer necessary like you know i've always told you that the greatest proof of love is what is sacrifice now if you love something so well you'll be willing to sacrifice anything to have that thing praise the lord i have had people i was somebody was telling me that he had to travel from Nigeria to Manchester to go and watch a match, a football match between Manchester United and uh, uh, Man City. That uh, he will be traveling, he bought ticket, you know, he had visa on his ticket, on his passport. He bought ticket because he loved that, uh, that, that match. He wanted, he loved football, he loved that club. He wanted to go and see them play. To him, he did not have inner satisfaction to watch it on TV. He would have just gone to the uh, 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 viewing center, you know, buy a ticket and watch. He said, no, I want to watch my favorite club, life. Now, there are things we do that shows that we are in love. Now, how do we know that that love is dropping? You will see that you will no longer begin to do those things will, willingly again. Even if you do them, you'll be doing it out of compulsion. That somebody is forcing you. Am I communicating? That's what God is saying here. And that's one of the things happening to several Christians why they no longer enjoy the power of God, the fellowship with God that they once enjoyed. They have allowed so many things, which I'm going to show you, to affect their work with God. So, sacrificial level is dropping. It's a clear sign, clear picture to show that they are loved. I wrote here, do you know that when love 
drops. Hear me? Obedience also drops. When love drops, obedience drops. Now, listen. When you begin to fall, fall away from love, you will see that your commitment level will begin to drop. So when love drops, the next thing you notice is that obedience level two will drop. Now, you that used to freely obey before, you find it difficult to want to obey again. I remember several choices I made when I gave my life to Christ. Several choices. Now, it got to a point I was going through persecution, you know, going through some tough time. I wanted to drop in my love with God and it's like I should begin to embrace those things that I, I once forbade. That I once forbid. I, you know, I, it's like, but I thank the Lord for restoration. So, pay attention this evening. Do, do, I, I wrote here, do you know that when love drops, obedience drops. Obedience will drop. So, when your love life drops, your obedience life will drop. I also want us to read that same verse again from this time, Message Bible. I read it with the three versions and I wrote it here. In the Message Bible, do we have that one too? Message Bible, Revelation chapter 5. I want you to catch the understanding very well before we move on. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 1. Yes. Look at this. He said with this, write this to the Ephesians. To Ephesus, sorry. To the angel of the church, the one with seven stars in his right fist, grip, striding through the golden seven lights, circle speaks. Verse 2. I see what, what I see what you've done. Your hard, hard work, your refusal to quit. I know you can't stomach evil. That you weed out apostolic pretenders. I love that. Verse 3. I know your persistence, your courage in your in your in my case, that in my course, sorry, that you never wear out. In my course, you never wear out. Verse 4. But you walked away. Look at that. From your first love. Why? What's going on with you anyway? You walked away from your first love. So don't, we are, we are bringing things together. You walked away. Now there's a way you used to serve God before. There's a way you used to be committed to the things of God before. He said, why did you walk away from it? That's what it means to fall from first love. Verse 5, verse 5, verse 5. Now look at it. Do you have any idea? How far you are falling? A Lucifer fall. Turn back. Recover your dear, dear, dear early love. No time to waste. For I am well on my way to removing your light from the golden circle. May our light not be removed. It's to show you how important that first love is. I wrote here, what are those things? You want sacrifice. Let's look at them. A, your players. Your players. Now, the, the ordinary man, we call it pleasure. Your players. Time to do the things that please you in order to do his will. You know how you used to do it before? That even before you take breakfast, you desire to say, I have to read my Bible first. That's your first love. How you do it before? That you say, ah, no, I've not prayed, though. I've not prayed. I have to have my time to pray before I go out. Now, when you are in love, you discover that you are willing to sacrifice even the things that interest you to please your lover. Now, and we are looking at those things that you have strayed from. A lot of you no longer have study life. A lot of you can no longer sacrifice your players in order to study scriptures. You rather stay on Facebook. You rather be on Instagram. Some of you rather want to play with your phone, playing games. Some of you want to watch movies. You know now that there are serious movies and it's available and accessible on phones. You see somebody sitting down with his phone for three hours, four hours. Even one hour watching movie. These are things that you weren't doing before. 
That's what the Lord was saying to the Ephesian church. And he's saying to you, I wrote here, do you remember how personal study was a priority? How personal Bible study was a priority? When you read your Bible, like you want to discover, just because to discover truth for growth, not even because you want to preach. That's the first love. When you pick your Bible, you say, I, I, I want to study this Bible. You know, I want to study this Bible because I want to grow. Not just because I have administration somewhere, they have given me a topic, so I need to research it. That's the first love. So the first thing to discover here that we sacrificed when we are in love with God is our pleasures. We don't consider the things that makes us happy first. When we love God, we want to say, Lord, is this your will? That's why the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all that you have. Then he now said, come to your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. How your faith was prompted from the word of truth that you discover. I remember some of you those days. You studied the word, you are touched, and you start going to hospitals to, to pray for the sick. How many of those do we see now? When devotion drops, the release of power will be cut short. How many of these do we see now? And God is saying, ah, you better return to your first love. I wrote here, B, listen. What are the things? To, you know, to wait upon the Lord. In those days, you know how you wait? You decide to wait upon the Lord in prayer and fasting. For God to use you. You are not fasting and praying because in those days, not because you want money or job. Today, people fast and pray when they need connection. They fast and pray when there is a contract in front of them. In our days, we fast and pray that God's purpose should be revealed more in our lives. Say first love. I want you to come back to it. If you are the one God is talking to, listen. Come back to it. How you fast, you wait upon the Lord for new spiritual gifts. You, you hear of a spiritual gift. You read about a spiritual gift and you are fasting and praying. Lord, display this kind of gift, this kind of grace in my own life. That's the first love. Where, where is that love? Praise the Lord. I say, talk to me, praise the Lord. Now, the first love, when you are conscious to do the things you were led to do by the Spirit of God. That's the first love. Is it still there? When the Holy Spirit will tap you that, sir, 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 my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, my son, my son, you have not won a soul today, and you will jump up. And you will go back to the streets. And you begin to look for some, a soul must be won today. A soul must be won today. He's saying, go back to your first love. Sacrifice is the proof of love. And when love begins to drop, sacrifice level drops. When love begins to drop, obedience level begins to drop. That's why you see, when a couple is in love, hear me, they won't bother who is taking the bills. If the wife decides to say, oh, thank you. When the love is on fire, the man can wake up in the morning, go to the kitchen and prepare and say, honey, I've prepared breakfast. But when love begins to go down, you notice that you now begin to now pick assignments. This one is not my responsibility. I want us to check our love for God. Are we still on fire for him? That hunger to study the word of God, is it still there? That hunger to want to come to church, is it still there? That hunger to want to know him more. Is it still there? Or have we gotten to a point where we just see that, well, ah, me con le padre say him more. It's like, if I go back now, everybody will know. The Bible says, and the Lord said to the efficient church, if you don't put it right, I am coming. I am coming to do what? To turn, to to turn your light off. May our light not be turned off. Now, let's not go in deep. In the, in the, what can you do to find your first love 
for God again. This is what I want to teach you today. What can you do to find your first love for God again? What can you do? You can't just leave it that way. Don't allow the light to go off. Don't allow the love you had for God to die. What can you do to find it again? Let's study the, the, the man that we call the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15, 11 to 24. Let's read the King James Version. Then I'll begin to explain one after the other. Luke chapter 15, from verse 11 to verse 24. Bale gadabase shantaya. Lengori adabasata. Luke chapter 15. And he said, A certain man had two sons. Follow these stories very well. Please, I want you to be fast. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them. He's living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with what? Prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land. And he began to be in want, which means he lacked. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent himself into the field to feed swines. Swine. Move on. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pots that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. Uh-uh. Even pig's food, nobody wanted to share with him. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. 19. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son make me like one of your hired servants 20 and he arose and came to his father but when he was still a great way off his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and the son said to him father I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. 23. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. 24. That's where I'm stop. I'll stop. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to what? To marry. Now, when I read this particular passage, it really ministered to me. And I will be sharing with you four major principles to restore your first love from it. Four major principles, four major steps. Now, you look at this man's life, his journey started in this, within these verses read, and we saw the end result. Let's learn. Now, what is the first one? The first one is in verse 17. Let's go back to verse 17. Let's go back to verse 17. Let's go back to verse 17. If your fire will be restored, your first love will be restored. The first step that this man took is in verse 17. And what was the first step? He did not deceive himself. I wrote here, he did not lie to himself. For this, but when he came to himself, he said, he came to himself. He did not lie to himself that he had lost something. 
Now, a lot of you, one of the reasons why you won't get your first love back, you won't get your, your lost fire back, is because you are still lying to yourself. Some of you have not come to agree that you have lost something. Now, maybe because those titles are still there. You are still bishop, reverend, apostle, uh, uh, evangelist, pope, music director, evangelism coordinator. You know, you have not agreed. I love this man. The Bible says, but when he came to, he came to himself and said, I don't have this thing again. I am no longer the son of my father. There is no more money with me. Oh. What I have done is wrong. He came back to himself. Have you come back to yourself to agree that you have lost something? You know, over the week, in one of the messages I used to sharpen myself, I was listening to uh, Reverend Billy Akoni's message. And he picked one scripture that really touched my heart. He talked about how the men of God went to prophet Elisha and said to Elisha, where you are meeting with us is too small. You remember that story? And they all went to say, okay, he, he, he gathered, they went, they gathered together. Okay, let's get a place. They went to tell the man of God, we have gotten a big land. Okay, what do we do? Let's clear it. And one man went to borrow what? An axe. And was trying to ax down a tree to clear the ground. And as he was trying to do it, what happened? The head of the axe, the iron part, fell into the river, into the stream and sank. The first thing the man, the Reverend Billy said, the first thing the man uh, did was to shout, I have lost it. Now, if you don't realize you lose something, you won't decide to take steps to look for it. Don't deceive yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Even if everybody call you Pastor Falabi, the anointed servant of God, if they call you and you know that you are not the anointed, see, don't deceive yourself. So, what's the first step this man took? He did not lie to himself that he lost it. I wrote here, stop the self-deception. If you have lost it, admit, like that young son, that prodigal son, admit that, ah, I am back to my senses. This is not how I used to be. Now you speak in tongues without power. That's the first step. In gaining your fire back, admit, I have lost it. Now, once you have admitted that you have lost it, you have taken the first step. You have laid the foundation. Now, after that young man came to himself, he says, look at himself. Ah, this is not me. She me when let the jail. So, she said, I'm going to go to the jail. I'm going to go to the jail. She me ni mo den to ka bible ma wa ka 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 oye oye mi She me ni mo den to wa asu ti mo wa asu to je ke mo kan o ko da biba ti lecturer nu classroom nu soro agbara o ti leyin Don't deceive yourself Don't deceive yourself do you see have it If not admit that you have lost it I know of so many people that, listen, the title they bear. Yesterday I was in a, in a wedding ceremony. And uh, when we got to Jogo, they greeted us. I went to greet the father and the mother of the bride. They are our friends, giving, back their, giving out their daughter in, as, and the marriage. So where I sat, I cited one man that used to be a multi-millionaire in this city. Multi-millionaire. In fact, they made him the king of the Easterners in this land. I saw where he was dressed in his regalia, you know, held the horn of a bull. I sighted him from far. So I went to him. He embraced me. Pastor, pastor, you know, we greeted. After exchanging pleasantries, I went back to my seat. But do you know, I noticed as he was going, he looked like this, looked like this. And the people that followed him, they started packing juice. Come on, happy hour. They were packing. He used to be a millionaire, but it's no longer. But he does not want to admit that he no longer has it. In those days, what do you want to put on the table? 
he will buy he will give you times times hundred of it but he's still posing as i am there sir you cannot look for what you have not discovered you have lost Shall I come again? You cannot look for what you have not discovered you lost. But So I love this man. He came back to himself. Some of you need to come back to yourself today. Number two is in verse 18 to 19. Let's read verse 18 and 19. Verse 18 and 19. Let's look at this. The Bible says, the man said, ever before he went to his father, he said, I will arise and do what? And go to my father and will say to him. He even said what he was going to say. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. 19. 19. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now, what is the second step in recovering your first love? Draw your return plan. You can't work with other people's plan. I have heard some people say, Pastor, whenever I lose my fire, you know what I do? I go on the mountain. That's their plan. I've heard some people say, whenever they lose their fire, you know what they do? They go gather books. You know what me I used to do? Anytime I discover that I am not as active as I used to do, I gather some messages of, of some, fat, some men I respect so much and I begin to hear them. And I begin to hear them. As I hear them, it ignites my fire. Then when I go back to the book of Acts of the Apostles, I begin to read from the beginning. It reignites my fire. If you are going to get your first love back, you must draw a plan. Draw your plan. I wrote here, it cannot be done anyhow. And I ask a question, what is your plan? This young man knew how to return and what to say in order to get his father's attention. So you draw your plan. What is your plan in order to get your first love back? Or do you think you will just be going as you are going as usual and you just find your first love again? It doesn't work that way. There must be a plan. What is the plan you have? I know of one of our sons in church. He will just come to me and say, Papa, I say, what's that? What's that? I'm going to the mountain and I'll be there for the next one week, sir. No problem. I'll pray for him. You are free to go. Because the devil is using both situations, challenges of life, you know, to try to make your love for God to drop. But in getting it back, that's what we are looking at. The young man did not just stand up and to, he, just, he didn't just leave it to wishes. He drew a plan. What's your own plan? That's why I, I, I used to tell you that you cannot call yourself a growing Christian and do not have a Bible study plan. I think I mentioned it last week. That when I started as a Christian, I was first reading the Bible in chapters. Then it got to a point, I started reading the Bible in books. It got to a point, I started reading the Bible in characters. That's maybe, let me study Abraham, or let me study Jacob, or let me, you know. It got to a point, I started reading the Bible topically. Let me study holiness. Let me study righteousness. Let me study honor. Let me study temptation. It got to a point, and now when I started, it got to a point again, I started studying the Bible and I was looking for principles. How do you intend to get your first love? What's your plan? Are people surely telling me? For 
Was this how your father was before? That you, you, know, in, you know how you used to be that you hardly talk without talking about Jesus. That every unbeliever around you no, somehow, somehow we hear Jesus from your, from, from your lips. Is it still the same? If it is not, what's the return plan? Draw your return plan. And your return plan must be unique to you. You know, when I was to return to our, our church here, you know, after focusing on the level church for almost a year or two years, uh, going to one year plus now, when I wanted to return, I drew a plan. By the time I was returning, a lot of things had died. Our Shiloh prayer meeting, I didn't use, I didn't know those days. Before I get here, they will have, time will have gone. It was later I began to discover that some members will come, there's nobody to open the door for them. So some of them will go, we go back. I do a plan. Part of my plan is what I started executing one after the other. One after the other. And I thank the Lord. Things are getting better. What's your return plan? Then look, the man did the third thing. After he drew a plan, verse 20 to verse 21. 20 and 21. 20 and 21. Thank you. And he arose. I love this. And came to his father. Look at this. And he arose and came to his father. What's our third lesson? He executed his plan. He didn't bury or procrastinate it. See, any plan you have on paper or in your mind that you didn't carry out will die. That's why some people say, and hey, you see, I have this plan, I have this plan. Plan does not fulfill itself. That's why a wise man said, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. Somebody said, no, sir. He said, sir, it starts with a decision. <laughs> a decision in the mind. It's not the step physically. But it's the same. You can have a good plan. If you don't add action to it, it will remain as it is. Some of you cannot fast again. You can't wait on God again. Some of you cannot pray more than five minutes again. Some of you cannot win soul again. Now I told you, draw the plan. After drawing the plan, start with a step. He didn't bury it. He didn't procrastinate about it. He went out to carry it out. He went on to carry it out. Any plan... You do not carry out. We never come to life. Before that, if they see you, they see you with one, one, one book. Anytime you are going around, there's a book you are reading. And you notice that my study life has dropped. You now have to draw the plan. Start, take the first step. You may not start by saying, I'm going to tax myself this one, this one month, I'm going to read 10 books as I used to read. No, you may not start with 10 books. You might not even stand with one whole book. I learned from John Maxwell. He talked about, in one of his messages, he talked about how you can achieve so many things at the same time. He said he had this very big tree in his compound. Very big. And he wanted to chop it down. He said, so he started with a plan. He wrote it down. I will chop down this tree in 30 days. Within 30 days. So he said, every day he will come to the tree and ask it, ka, 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 like 20 times. He will leave it. He will go and do other things. 
He said, by the end of the 30th day, the tree came down. Sir, any plan you do not have add action to will never stand. One of our daughters was signing out of university three or four days ago. I was telling the mom yesterday, congratulating her. I remember the day they brought her to me for prayer that she was going to invest in. Four years ago, if it remained, if it was a wish in their mind, they didn't add action to it. Would have been like that. That's the same thing I was sharing with uh, some of our members in church. We were trusting God for fruit of the womb many years, many years. I mean, three years. But the day I told myself, I'm going to solve this problem. My wife too agreed, we are going to solve this problem. You don't take steps small and turn back. That's one thing with me. Any step I take, I want to see the end. When I was cutting with my wife, before we got married, one of my uncle came and saw me. He saw my wife, my wife to be, fancy then. I said, Pastor, when are you going to get married? I said, we are trusting God for finance. You don't trust God for finance. He said, Pastor, take the first step. I said, what is the first step? Go to the family. Tell them your intention. So I drew my plan. And my plan, first step, take two bottles of wine. I took two bottles of wine to our elder brother. Second step, book an appointment with our parents. I book appointment. They say we are going to Ijebu. I told them to give me time to gather transportation. When we gather transportation, we travel. The father said, what do we want? Ask me what I want. I said, I want to get married. He was saying, ah, my daughter is too young. I think because she was around 23 or so that time. My daughter is too young. The mom just came up and said, they want to travel to America. Ah, I didn't know where that one came from. America, Bitibao. Well, because I've had, you know, I told you I had one message of uh, Pastor W.F. Kumwe, righteous and foolish. That the spies, you remember? That Joshua sent, when they were running, they ran into the house of that prostitute. The woman put them on the roof. And when the soldiers came, those men, did they not enter this place? The woman said, no, they've gone to the hills. He said, if you are righteous and foolish, you say, no, don't lie. We have not gone to the hill. We are here, we are here. Stop lying about us. He's, he's, Pastor Kumu, he said, since you were not the one that lied, shut up. So when the mother said, they are going to America. And if they don't get married, they will stop them. The father said, America? That's in the Jebu language. If I had not had action to that plan, I would have been single till date. So the young man stood up. Show us the scripture. We are still reading it. 20 lawa. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Can you see that? It was his action that he took steps towards that did what? That gave back to compassion in the heart of the father. Take steps. To find your first love again. Then number four, which is the last one, verse 21. Thank you. 21. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Wait for me. Remove it. What's the lesson? His purpose of returning to his father, for his father's house, was for his father's love. Not, listen, was for his father's love, nothing more. Not even to be a son. What was he looking for? That my father will love me again. He didn't come back to say, I'm going to fight for a place of, to be one of his sons. And I wrote down, yes, sir, in finding your first love, 
don't allow church politics to distract you find your first love in, in with Christ not your position in church do you know that you can be in front in church and God will not know you you can even be preaching and God doesn't know you some of you are getting it wrong instead of you to fight for your first love you are fighting for other, other things So this man got it wrong. He was not distracted. The son in the house, the elder brother was already jealous. He didn't come to fight for property. He didn't come to say, my father, I'm going to be your son. He already made up his mind. Even if I'm going to be a slave, I just want my father to love me again. If what you want to fight to gain back is your prayer life, focus on it. If what you want to fight to gain back is your study life, focus on it. If what you want to fight to gain back is your evangelism life, your zeal for the things of God, focus on what you want. And don't be distracted with the politics in church. He didn't ask for the right of his son, but the, the father said, you know what? My son is back. Go and get the best robe for him. My son is back. Go and kill the fattened cow for him. My son is back. But that was not what he was actually looking for. If you look for the wrong thing, you can't get the right thing. He was looking for his father's love. In the love of the father, everything he was looking for, he needed. He's involved. Thank you, sir. Do you know that if you find back your way into the arms of God, there is nothing you want that is not there. Anointing is there. Grace is there. Those things that you want, they are inside. But just find his love again. I'm summarizing. I thank God for the life of this young man. Though his story didn't start well, but look at the ending. Leaders, don't let everybody know you as leaders. And before the Lord, you are not. You know one of the things that I love about the life of David? God by himself spoke to Samuel about him. He was a man after God's heart. That's what I want you to work on. I want to be a man after your heart, Lord. I want to serve you with my life, with all that I have. Have you lost your first love? Please come back. How do you come back? Realize that you have lost it. How do you come back? Draw, draw your return plan. How do you come back? Execute the plan. How do you come back? Do not be distracted from the Father's love. Don't let every other thing in church distract you. Because there are politics in church. Oh. The kind of politics that you don't see in the world is in church. But you know what you want. I will keep telling you, the only thing I want in this life is that by the time I finish my race, and my spirit man is walking towards that, that, that lane. I want to receive an open arm of Jesus. Saying to me, welcome home. Good and faithful servant. Enter into my righteousness. So this morning, if you need to pray, I want us to take few minutes five minutes to pray for ourselves lord my first love 
I am set to return to it. Help me in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. To return to my first love. If I me a coco. Balinga na masi. Lega da barabas. Keep praying. Talk to the Lord. Balaga da barabarabas. Sendele mosunto ye maskene. I want more of you. Baling it, Balibos. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. Lord, I want more, Lord. I want more of you. I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you. The more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you, more, I want more of you. Are you praying? I want more of you, Jesus. The more I pare gerebo sondo yes, the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you. Tell the Lord, help me that I will find my fire again. I will find my fire again. Shagada basekele maskene. My lost fire will be restored. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. The more Sagada Barabasene, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. Exalted Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory, we give you all the worship. We give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration. We lift your name on high, O oh God. Father, take all the glory. We ask for full restoration in the name of Jesus. As we take these steps, O oh God, our first love will be restored. Then we will move to a much higher and greater dimension of love for you in the name of Jesus. Every force of distraction is rebuked from the way in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' precious name of prayer. As we go into this new week, we enter into a new dimension of favor. All we lay our hands upon to do this week.